How nervous were you that Sunday afternoon in Cooperstown? Uh, you know, I, I don't know if it would be uh, nervous. I don't think it, it, it's a little bit like pitching in that the nerves are there before you start. But uh, I wanted to honor Sandy Koufax's request to keep it short. And uh, they like it under, you know, 15 minutes. So I think I the flow. And, you know, when you stand up at that stage in little Cooperstown and you look out of the audience, you, you, you know, you think you're uh, Freddie, Freddie Mercury at Live Aid. I mean, you got 30,000 people out there. So that, it was quite a thrill. As it should be, you deserved it. Well done there. All right, number two, uh, a couple of passings, which are very, uh, I'm sure, you know, you played against and with, and were very sad. And one was McCarver, great broadcaster. You pitched to him, too, a few years with the Phillies in the late 70s. Timmy uh, passes away. Thoughts with that? Let me hear. Go ahead. Well, you know, Timmy and I, we were, we were two friends that maybe we'd only see each other three, four times a year. But going back to 1976, uh, we just bonded and uh, stayed in touch. And, you know, I'm, I'm fortunate to be at 84 healthy, but, uh, you know, Bruce Souter, who passed away, and then Timmy, I was going to go down to Sarasota and, uh, and spend some time with him. And his daughter, Kathy, called and said they're flying him into Memphis and hospice, and I got there as quickly as I could. I was actually at his bedside when he... Uh, when he passed away at the hospice, people say, you know, we, we think they might be able to hear you, uh, even though they can't communicate. So uh, I was talking to him about the good times we had. And, you know, he was just such a bright baseball mind. Today's statistical geniuses, I don't think, understand that. They only know numbers. But Timmy was as intelligent a catcher as, as you could want. And then he carried that right on into broadcasting and became, uh, you know, he became as honest and objective as any broadcaster's ever been. 100% right. Sal Bando, who had a lot of success against you, by the way, as a hitter. I don't know if you knew that. He hit four home runs and he had something at bats. And, you know, that caught everybody by surprise, too. And Bando, the three championships, built teams, a wonderful part of those great A's teams. How about him? Well, he's not alone in uh, doing well against me. <laughs> but I remember telling Harmon Killebrew, you know, we won the – when it, the league went to divisional play in 69. We won in 69 and 70 rather easily. And the Oakland A's were still the Kansas City A's. And uh, Harmon and I were saying, you know, these guys are really going to be good. They had Campy Campaneris. They had Reggie. They had Catfish by the Blue. And then Bando – was kind of their anchor. He was their, uh, you know, he was their rock over there. So, uh, again, it's it's one of the uh, things Fergie Jenkins and I were talking about it this morning. Uh, uh, I think, yeah, we're both about the same age. But, uh, you know, you, you cherish the memories of uh, the guys we played with and against. But uh, every day it seems like we're, you know, we're saying farewell to another one of them. Now, uh, Vider is another one who passed away a couple weeks ago, too. Uh, pitch clock. Thank goodness you didn't ever need it. You got the ball and threw it. But, boy, these games. How about this? Two hours and four minutes. Yeah, I wish you could still broadcast. You'd be in there, have a cocktail when the game's over. It'd be 9 o'clock at night. <laughs> My goodness, it's been, so, <laughs> it's been so much better. What a job by the commissioner's office. Let me hear your thoughts on that. Go ahead. Yeah, I, you know, it's a long time coming, and it's sad that it, it had to be implemented because – uh, I think in the days when we pitched and the hitters hit, they stayed in the box. Uh, we, had a, we had a lot of feeling for the guys playing behind us that we didn't want to keep them out there too long. Uh, we tried to work fast, throw strikes. We didn't have sports psychologists filling uh, a lot of information into our head where we had to step out of the box and walk around the mound. So we didn't need it. But I, I'm so happy that they've implemented it and that, as you said, they're playing the games at a brisk pace. There's not enough time to think, stand over, stand, get off the rubber and say, well, let's see, which pitch should I throw? It's, hey, first impulse, which is usually best anyway. And, and we're seeing, I think, a, a lot better quality of baseball. 
Hundred percent. I know I've asked you this story a lot, but I have not asked you this on TV. And I want the audience, the the six who watch, I want them to hear this because it's one of the great stories of all time, and it's it's great baseball. Tell them the story with Mickey in 1967 with the home run. That's one of the great ones. You got to set it up right, Jim. You can handle it. Go ahead. Let me hear. Well, you know our friend Bob Costas is such a Mickey Mantle fan, and he carries his card around, Mickey's card in his wallet. And he remembers all the details. But in 1967, which was perhaps the greatest pennant race before divisional play, four teams still had a win, a chance to win in the, uh, in the last week of the season. And earlier that year in July, I pitched against the Yankees. I had a one nothing lead, two out in the ninth. Mickey was the hitter. Russ Nixon trotted out which I don't like catchers coming out anyway, but he came out and he said, what do you think? Which meant did I want to walk Mickey? Well, Elston Howard was in the on deck circle and actually Elston uh, would have been a threat if I walked Mickey to get an extra base. I said, I'm going after him. And I went after him and he went after me and it went 457 feet, tied the game at one. Tenth inning, it got washed out a suspended game. I came back, I think 30 days later, pitched that makeup game Gave up a run in the first inning. Steve Barber shut us out. We got beat one nothing. So I pitched two complete games, gave up two runs. I got a loss and a tie, and we lost the pennant by one game. So uh, that was a memorable night. <laughs> Um, but I love it. I can hear that all day. Uh, but Nixon comes out. Hey, you, Jim, what do you think? And that's pitch yeah. to him. He hits the ball out of the ballpark. You lose the game, and you lose later, and then you lose one nothing. And as it turns out, you lose the pennant by the last day of the season. I mean, that is, is good. I love that. That is so good. I appreciate it. Jimmy, you know we love you. Stay healthy. Great to see you here today. Appreciate you coming on. Always a pleasure. All right. Always good being with you, Chris. Thank you.